You know it's something when a TV show about a side character from a movie is so good, so, so good, that it absolutely dwarfs the $200 million disappointment that you slock out as a very unnecessary sequel. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Penguin, the first season. Kind of curious at whether they'll do another season. Colin Farrell has been signed on for more appearances as The Penguin, but it kind of seems to be a little bit back and forth. Regardless, this show is way better than I thought it was going to be. Colin Farrell absolutely kills it as Oswald. He already did in the movie to a point where he was so well regarded that they gave him a show. But this show doesn't just focus on Oswald and helps build him as such a despicable character, but it helps bridge the gap of what happened after the events of the first movie, following a lot of the destruction that happened to Gotham after the Riddler set off all those bombs and helped flood a huge portion of the city. So it's a show that you actually kind of need to watch to fully understand the implications and the events of what happened after the first film. Kind of like, you know, what almost none of the Marvel shows did. I know that the Loki one's really good and, and I still have to see season two, but it just felt like this show mattered. It didn't matter just for the fact of Oswald's involvement with it. It didn't just matter for the involvement of the city's destruction and it's very slow, if not nothing at all, attempt to try and rebuild itself, more so just keep lingering on for the destruction that happened. But we also have one of the best additions to this show, which again, I did not know was coming. Kristen Melody as Sofia Falcone absolutely kills it in this show. Probably my favorite part of the show. I, I can already say that Penguin is one of the best parts of it, but Sofia is so well done in this show because she just has so much destructive elements to her character and there's moments where you go back and forth between feeling bad for her for being terrified of her to kind of just being very very impressed with her her involvement in this show was a big surprise to me and i liked how she went from someone who had been scorned someone who had been wrongfully accused wrongfully punished for things that were completely out of her control and then slowly and eventually diving in headlong into this version that people had portrayed her as, this monster, while still reflecting on it, still understanding that she is becoming what she was said to be, despite her objections of it. I like how she goes from being somewhat of a recluse, somewhat of trying to resemble that of her father but then realizing that she needs to show off what actually made her what she is and she starts to show off the scars that she got from when she was wrongfully imprisoned in Arkham and I think it's at that point that she really turns into this evil owl this crow and I don't know if it was just because of Kristen's eyes but also the hair the costumes it really made me feel like she was an owl or a crow, like a court, not a court of owls, but she was always on a perch. She was looking down and trying to assert power while technically speaking, being small of stature, she still was of the presence of mind of chaos and taking on what, what rightfully should have been hers and avenging those who have wronged her. There's this really kind of short-lived relationship between her and Penguin where they're kind of working together, but then the first instance that it all starts to break down, you see just how despicable Oswald is, and he immediately starts to fork over, and that's only the beginning. Wait till you get to the part about his family, or what he does with his other associates. Colin just did a, such a remarkable job about making Penguin the literal devil, making him one of the most scummy, absolute despicable people in Gotham. Even when you have somewhat of a care for him, and when the show does come to the end, you're almost at the point where you're just not rooting for him at all anymore. You don't want him to win. And despite the fact that you were kind of on his side at the very beginning of the show, you keep on going, yeah, man, that's kind of fucked up. The show also was very well shot, incredibly well shot. I loved a lot of the cinematography in the show using the destruction of the city, the dankness. It really tried to incorporate as much of Greg Frazier's cinematography from the Batman as it could on a TV show budget. And the writing's pretty good too, mostly probably leaning into a lot of improv when it's like, ah, get the fuck out of here, which by the way, yeah, this is an R-rated show, which is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be like, 
trying to go back to the old X-Men movies after watching Logan, because there's so much swearing and blood and violence in this show. To a comic book degree, it's not trying to be realistic. There are some moments in this where you're like, holy shit, that, that was terrorism, but that, that happened in the books. Really does still kind of heed to what it could do from the comics while still being its own thing. So it's a respectful sort of uh, representation of the character and Gotham and what Matt Reeves has established with the first movie. Yes, there is the very, very obvious lack of Batman in this show, and Matt's kind of given a reason to it. Well, it's kind of the back and forth about him being shit kicked out of him from the, ri ri uh, the Riddler element, as well as him more so focusing on helping people, because that was something that he really kind of discovered at the end of the film. So it's kind of a back and forth. So that might bother you a bit, and I can understand why. And then, like I said, the writing, while it is fun, it is a fun show, you really do get a lot of Sopranos kind of vibes from it, just how everyone's talking. But the show does gradually get into its rhythm. Maybe the first two episodes are a little slow, but every bit keeps going. And even when there's flashbacks, those flashbacks correspond with what is going on in the show and with the characters and with the pacing and with the story. Do you need to watch it to understand what's gonna happen in the Batman movie? I actually would say yes, because you are gonna need to know what's going on. There's elements that are introduced into this. There's a character that I really, really hope comes back. It's a character that would really not get as much of an effect to you if you watch them in the second film without knowing what they were in the show. So again, I would really suggest that. Performances are great, cinematography is great, structure and just atmosphere and respect to the movie that it came from is great writing's pretty decent and i think that it's a, a very good watch i can understand why some people might have some criticisms with it but overall it is a solid show i think it was really well put together in the end i'm going to give the penguin a five out of seven yeah that's it actually i was just kind of surprised i really thought it was going to be mid i am still very sad that we never got the gotham pd show matt reeves is working on that and maybe they thought that hey we did the gotham show which to be honest i i, I didn't like that show i thought the show was really dumb there was a lot of elements that were just not great and then also ben mckenzie i swear to god that man can either be a uh, blank cardboard or angry cardboard but those are just my own issues but please let me know what you guys thought about the show what do you think about penguin what do you think about it what do you think the batman universe with matt reese will go let me know in the comments below very interested to see what you guys have to say anyways guys that's all for me hope you enjoyed the review if you did leave a like and if you're interested more subscribe until then see you guys next time